Hi there. My name is Jean Ping and I'm a reference librarian at Butte College. There are several reference librarians here at the library and we are here to answer your questions to help you with your research and help you find the information you need. There are several ways to get a hold of us. Uh, right now we're the library is closed because of COVID so you can't come in and ask us questions but you can email us at referencely at butte.edu and you can also use our 24-7 chat service, which is right here. Anytime you need some help figuring something out, you just put in your name and email address and ask a question. And we have a whole co-op of librarians who answer the questions. It's not good for technical help kind of things. Like if your ID isn't working and you can't log in, it doesn't work for that. But it will be great for any kind of research question that you have. So you can get hold of us that way. I'm going to be giving you a little tour of our library services and um, so you can watch along. We also offer shorter video tutorials for just single jobs. This is going to be kind of an overview and um, you can just try this all this out on your own. So we have a lot of different services here. This is our general search bar which I'm going to show you in a minute where you just can search for anything. If you want to use the research databases to find articles, you can use this button. If you scroll down, you can find our reserve textbooks. We're not doing reserve textbooks right now, but that's where the button is. We have research guides, which I will show you later, and video tutorials. You can use any of our online services whenever you have an internet connection. If you are off campus, you just need to log in with your MyBC username and password when it asks you. Okay, let's look for a book. Say, for example, that we're going to do a search for a psychology book. We have a lot of those. So we're just going to put that in, press search. And it comes up with a whole list of results. And the top ones, if there are any textbooks, they, those will be at the top. So you can see that they're on reserve. And then you scroll down a little bit and you get a mixture of physical and ebooks. So if it says it's available in the stacks, then it's a physical book. If it says it's available online, you can get it as an ebook. Now during the COVID shutdown, we're not going to be using physical books, but you can search for ebooks by clicking books here, limiting it just to books, and then clicking available online. and that will get you ebooks. So let's say you want to read about sport and exercise psychology. You can just click right here and it will go directly to the ebook. You can see the cover here. You can see a summary of what the book is about so that you can decide whether or not it's something you want to read. Over here on the right side you will see some tools. You can add the information to your Google Drive. You can get a, there you, a little free folder in the EBSCO database service so you can come back and find it later. That's not super permanent because you have to be logged in and it will log you out very fast and it won't tell you. You can print a selection or this front page. You can email this to yourself. You can't email yourself the whole book but you will email yourself the information and a link to it, which is very handy. You can also get the citation right here. It will just come up with citations for every different style. If you're using APA, it's right there. There's Chicago. And MLA is right here. And you can just copy and paste that directly into your paper. So it's very handy. You can also find a permanent link here. The URL at the top of the page is not permanent. It is the result of a search. So if you copy that and try to come back later, it won't work. You need to copy this in order to come back later. Sometimes you might want to email that to somebody or something. Okay. If you want to actually read the book, you click here on PDF or the EPUB and it opens up the book for you. 
Okay, and you can see the cover here. You can go from section to section with these arrows. Or you can also use the table of contents right over here. Each of these will go to the next section. This is the download symbol. I do not usually recommend that you download ebooks. Um, it takes, it's kind of a hassle. It takes two accounts. Both are free, but you have to register for them. You need to download a specialized Adobe app, and then the book disappears after a couple of days. So you can just read it right here as long as you've got an internet connection, and I would only bother to download it if I did not, was not going to have an internet connection for a few days. When you wish to close the book, you need to press this back button here. That will tell the database that you're done. If you just close out the tab, then uh, the database doesn't know, and it has to wait to time out. And until that time is over, nobody will else will be able to use the book, including you. So it will not know that you're trying to get back in. Otherwise, you can go ahead and access the book anytime. It's just a single user license, though. So if somebody else is using it, you have to wait your turn. Just wait half an hour and try again. Okay, let's go back to the results list. This is just a list of books. It will also, if you just do a general search, it will also come up with articles and journals and things like that. But the best way to find articles is really to use our databases page. That's easier to deal with. So let's take a look at that. At the Butte College Library, we subscribe to about 50 databases for every topic. There is business and government, music, medical, news, anything you could want. So our top 10 are over here on the side, right here. Those are the most popular ones. And you can also do an alphabetical search. We have a lot of different interesting things. We have uh, streaming videos here. So you can look for documentary videos. We have a subscription to the New York Times and another one to the Sacramento Bee. And we have these large general uh, databases like Academic Search Complete and ProQuest and SIRS. The, the uh, database I'm going to show you right now is excellent for a current issues kind of paper. It's called SIRS. Let's say your instructor says, I would like you to write a current issues paper, something you care about that's relevant, and I never want to hear about marijuana or abortion or gun control ever again in my whole entire life. So you can't write about those. Well, what are you going to write about? SIRS is a treasure trove of ideas. It's just wonderful. So you can see it has these, um, these pictures that are each topics. You can do a general search right here for any topic you like. We'll try that in a bit but it also divides its articles up into these great topics. And here are the general categories down here, and then they just highlight some up here. So let's say we want to talk about school, family, and youth. That's something you're interested in. You can go there and it has each of these is a topic about which you can find plenty of information. So how about college tuition? That's pretty relevant. Let's look at that. So first of all, it will give you a little overview of the topic. That's not a real article. It's just the database's overview. And then it gives you a kind of example of pro and con arguments. It asks a question, something that would actually be very good for a for a research kind of paper or a position paper, and it gives you two different viewpoints and articles that argue for each viewpoint. So it's a very nice example of how to write a persuasive or pers position paper on a current topic. This is the most important part, find more sources. We'll come back to that in a second. It also gives you some examples of good questions to ask. 
you know, maybe a cartoon. And then there's usually a little timeline down at the bottom, which is really nice because it'll give you an idea of the development of the topic in question. But most importantly is to click here on Find More Sources for this topic. And that's where you find the list of articles. We have here a couple of thousand articles about college tuition. Um, the most recent ones are on top, except for the overview and the things they've kind of got pinned to the top here. You can see on the side that they're categorized by the type of source. There's newspapers, magazines, even government sources, and things like that. So you can say, I only want to look at magazine stories or government sources or something like that. They don't do a lot of scholarly journals. Other databases have much more of that kind of thing. So let's say, let's look at this one. I can see this is from the Los Angeles Times about eight months ago. We click on that and I get a summary to see if this is something I really want to deal with. I can see where it was published and when, and I can just go ahead and read my article. But I also have some tools here. I can listen to this article. It will read it aloud to me if I prefer, maybe while I'm commuting. I can translate it. If I want to read it in Turkish or Spanish or Korean, I can do that. I can save it to my Google Drive. I can produce a citation in MLA or APA or Chicago, Turabian in Chicago there. I can print it out and I can email it to myself. Now when you find articles or books that you think will be useful to you, I would really recommend that you email it to yourself if you think it will be remotely useful. And that way you don't have to go back and find it again. It's very common for people to write something down and then try to find it again and they can't find it and they only have half the information and it's just a hassle. But if you email it to yourself, you will always have it and it can't get lost. So that's just my little tip there. At the bottom, you will find related subjects and you might wish to um, to click on any of these, each one will do a search on that particular um, subject. Like for example, if I click here, I'll get a list of articles that are relevant to that. I can also do a search up here, like so, and it will come up with um, whatever I search on. So let's say I want to look at just magazines, I can do that, things like that. Okay, so that database is called a SIRS Issues Researcher, and it's great for current issues. It does not have scholarly resources for the most part, it only has a little bit. And if your instructor says that you need to come up with scholarly resources, you need to go to another database, for example, Academic Search Complete or ProQuest. We're not going to talk a little a lot about uh, scholarly articles in this class, but I am going to show you this EBSCO database. It should look it looks familiar. It's just like the eBooks one because the same uh, company owns it. Now, when you're doing a search here on one of these larger databases like ProQuest or Academic Search Complete. The first thing you want to do is find the full text button and click it. Because these larger databases collect citations for articles as well as full articles. And so you don't want to do a search and then come up with a bunch of articles that you can't actually read because they didn't get the whole thing. That's not useful. There are millions of articles in this database. So just skip it and press full text. If you are looking for just scholarly journals, you can click this, but if you don't, you'll get a mix of um, popular and peer reviewed, and that is just fine. So let's do a search here. We'll stick with college tuition. And you can see it starts doing um, 
suggestions as to what I might want to put in. I'm just going to put in just college tuition for right now. And you can see I get 2400 articles. This is more than I really want to deal with. And I have many tools here to narrow it down and make it more specific. For example, I have this slidey bar that covers the publication dates. The oldest of these articles is from 1935. That's much older than I want to deal with. I'm only going to worry about the last 10 years. And so it will update. And now I only have a thousand articles to deal with, which is less. I can also um, say, you know, I really only want to read about magazines. I don't want to deal with newspapers. So I could do that. And it will update. And you can see on the side here, it shows a little icon as to what kind of a resource it is. I've selected magazines, so it says periodicals. But if I, um, I could have newspapers, scholarly journals, and other things too. So let's take a look at this. This is a magazine called State Legislatures, or, or here's one from Nation. Let's look at that. And here I have the abstract, which is the summary of the article. It's always very handy, especially in these larger databases, to read it before you try to read the actual article. Because a lot of the articles are 20 pages long and written at a very high level, and you don't want to slog through the whole thing before you decide whether or not you want it or not. So you can just read the abstract and find out first. Here are your tools up on the side, the same as we saw earlier. And you can read the article by clicking on the PDF, and it's just a scanned copy. So you can read that there. And here you will find the table of contents from the original magazine. And if it's a themed issue or something, you might find something else that's useful to you. So it's always good to look at it. Let's go back to the result list. And I can continue looking at all of these articles. I've got plenty. Here's one that says it has the HTML available as well. So you can see both are on the side here. And that means that the article will be available in its full text below the information that, uh, that serves as a sort of front cover to it. This is good to know because if you have the HTML option, you can have it read to you and you can even pick what accent you want. And you can also translate it if you wish. So if it says HTML, then you can do that. Otherwise it doesn't it doesn't offer it for just the PDF ones. Now let's say I want to uh, narrow this down a bit. I have this option here. I have and, or, and not. And will narrow down my results. So let's say I want to talk about grants in relationship to uh, college tuition. Now, if I use this and option, I will only get some articles, I'll get fewer, and they will all have grants as well as uh, college tuition as a topic. And maybe you saw that before, when I wrote grants, it suggested OR funding. And OR is another option right here. OR will uh, widen out your search a little bit. You, it's good for synonyms. You can say grants or funding or scholarships and have all of those words covered and they will all show up. Any one of them is okay. So and narrow things, narrows things down and or widens them out. And not is um, the least used one. You're not going to need it very much, but it's very handy for one particular job. If you are doing a search on a general term and you keep getting results that you don't like mixed in with what the the stuff you are looking for, you can say not and f 
find something that those unwanted results have in common and cut them out. So say, for example, you are doing a search on cowboys, and along with the historical information about cowboys, you're also coming up with a lot of articles about the Dallas Cowboys. You could say cowboys not football, and that would get rid of all the stuff about the Dallas Cowboys that you don't want. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Let's go back to the databases page. You may also like to try out some of these other databases. Statista has statistics. Uh, like I said, ProQuest is very much like uh, Academic Search Complete, like I just showed you. And you can go through and look at all of these. There's all kinds of great stuff here. Health and Wellness, and Health Source, those are good medical ones. All right. So we have looked on how to search at the library for a book or an article. We've looked at our databases. If you scroll down here, we also offer a selection of research guides, and we put these together for your classes. Some of them are class specific. So for example, if you're in an English class, you can have information relevant to your class put into a guide. Others are just more general. So for example, we have citation guides. So if you need to write a paper with APA or MLA, you can look at these uh, guides and then get help with that. We have other things like, for example, if we have a book display, we might put that in here. We have a really nice one on evaluating media, social media, dodgy news, that kind of thing. And I would highly recommend everybody to read this one because it just has a really, some really good information in there. Down here you can find the research things. And so, for example, there's a really great step-by-step -step guide to writing a research paper. This is very helpful if you find that you don't really know how to write a research paper. This gives you just a really nice map for it, so it's very handy. So, back here to the library homepage. Now, most of the time you're used to doing a Google search for when you're looking for information. And here at the library, we want to encourage you to use our databases and our books and our research guides for the reason that a Google search is not a good use of your time when it comes to college level research. You will wind up with lots of uh, just junk results that you have to wade through in order to find something that you can use. And it just takes a lot longer much of the material in our databases is not available on the wider web for free because we pay to to get access to it it's a subscription and so that's all reliable information that you won't find through a google search or you will find it hidden behind a paywall i'm sure you have done a search in the past and found what looks like the perfect article only to discover that they want twenty dollars for it and you're they want you to give them your credit card number and we never want you to do that here at the Butte College Library because you have already paid your fees and as a Butte College student you have the right to access to all of this stuff without paying for it anymore. So anything that you um, need to get access to for your schoolwork should be free after you've paid your fees and we are here to help you with that. If the article or the book you want is not something we have direct access to, we have a service called Interlibrary Loan, and we can get it for you, usually fairly quickly if it's an article. So ask us about that. Another thing we have here is video tutorials. If you want to know just how to do one job in the library, we have a video for it probably, and we are always making more. Uh, we've had videos for a long time, but we're refreshing them now, so these are all brand new. You'll find that we have things about using the library remotely, how to find a scholarly article, how to download ebooks, getting citations from the databases. 
Here's our interlibrary loan video, getting an article the library doesn't have. How to find zero textbook co cost classes. All this kind of thing. And they're divided up by topic. Citations, databases, you know, anything you need to use. Research tips. These videos are also found on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. It's right here. It's just the Butte College Library. And all of our videos are available there, too. So we hope that you will access our resources for your research needs. We're here to help you do your research uh, better, more efficiently, faster, and with a better result. So please ask us questions. Contact us through our chat. Um, take a look around our website and look at our uh, at our the great things we have to offer. Thank you.